how are you doing Kelly Crowd? Today we're going to be doing a front lever focused pull session. You guys seem to really love the push session that I did a couple weeks back where actually a couple weeks later I ended up fully learning the handstand push up. Still working on cleaning those up at the moment and today I want to show you exactly what I'm doing for pull. A lot of the work we do here today will be high capacity so a lot of high volume, a lot of high rep. The idea being that we want to build up those muscles that are going to be responsible for allowing me to do the front lever eventually. I've got some intro workout coffee so without further ado let's jump into some max attempt front lever holds okay so those are some front lever attempt holds the idea is that i want to be able to really try and max out how long I can hold a front lever. As you can see, I can only stick out one leg at the moment. I'm gonna try and hit seven odd seconds and I'm doing it on a low bar so I'm not wasting energy with managing to get up, up onto a high bar, jumping around, lowering down. Let's go for another one. Obviously, we are 50 times stronger when we're topless if you're training outside. Okay, so those are my max attempts. Essentially, just want to get the muscles for the skill primed and ready. I think isometrics are a really great way to start your workout, just generally, regardless of what you're training. Just fire yourself up, get yourself pumped for the goal that you're looking to achieve gonna jump into some tuck front lever raises now dynamic straight arm focus because that's what we're looking to achieve let's get into it I swear dynamic straight arm exercises really challenge you in ways that you just don't understand. If you ever find any trouble with building up strength, obviously you need to use the, the bent arm exercises, but in terms of understanding the skill that you're looking to do, tuck variations, straight arm dynamics will <laughs> just take you to the next level. The key thing with straight arm dynamics is to always focus on that shoulder position. You wanna keep your scapula depressed. You will kind of fall in and out of scapular retraction. Don't worry too much about that, but make sure your arms are straight and you're pulling all from the shoulders. This will feel a lot like a T-bar pull down and you've really got to focus on driving those shoulders down and away, pulling the bar closer to you. I really like the tuck variation of this. I really bring my knees in just so I can focus on that shoulder position. And as I get stronger, I'll obviously extend the legs out, but just eliminating all of the faff from the waist down means I can focus on the upper body, which is ultimately the most important part of the front lever anyway. It's all in the shoulders. Forget about what anybody says about front lever being a core exercise, it, it really isn't. That's all the tuck front levers. Gonna jump into some pull-ups. A lot of people think, okay, because front levers are a horizontal pulling pattern, then pull-ups don't really matter. In my experience, from what I've observed with the calisthenics athletes I know, the people that are good at front levers are extremely proficient at pull-ups, particularly weighted pull-ups. Some of these guys that can front lever, that I know anyway, can pull up up to half of their body weight, sometimes even 75% of their body weight. These are just beasts of calisthenics. I can only hope to get there one day. But for now, just for me, high rep body weight pull ups.
The virtues of having a bar that is tall enough is just, oh. I'm not even particularly tall, I'm five foot 10. And yet so many gyms, when you get to the lowering point of the pull up, your feet hit the floor. And it's like, come on guys. You have one job, just build the bar at a correct height. genuinely believe that what you do between your sets says a lot about you as a person. So those are the pull-ups done. I'm gonna go into some knee raises now. Now, for those who are thinking, didn't you just say this is a shoulder exercise? Why are you working on your core? Number one, a lot of the stability of your entire body still comes from your core. So regardless of what you're training, you should still be training your core in some capacity. And the second thing is, because I have a desk job where I do a lot of sitting, doing things that fire up the hip flexors, fire up the core, particularly in that spinal flexion motion, means that all of these muscles along here don't atrophy. I, I don't wanna become one of those crippled, hunched over people that has just been sat at a cubicle for the lion's share of his life. As you just saw, with my leg raises, what I typically do is that I do leg raises for the first three to five reps, depending on how I feel. Then if I don't feel that I can continue that going, if I feel my shoulders starting to kick in, if I feel it more in my hip flexors, what I do is I revert to a knee raise quality over everything. There's no point doing hanging leg raises and only feeling it in the muscles that you're not intending to work. So if you need to regress an exercise in order to make it do what you need it to do, then by all means, regress to progress. That's the hanging leg raises out of the way. And actually the next exercise is a little bit of an interesting one. It's a different play on an exercise that you guys on this channel know that I love. I call it the pseudo front lever roll. Essentially what it is, it's a, it's a body weight roll essentially, but you're pulling to your waist. The idea is that in a tuck front lever raise, it's a straight arm exercise, right? So you pull with your arm straight and you pull down but ultimately what you're doing is you are pulling to your waist we know that if we want to build up capacity if we want to build up strength and we want to get the conditioning for all of the joints involved with any movement right we need to do a high volume work get that blood flow the way it needs to be and two we need to move the joints through a full range of motion and while straight arm work does do that for the shoulder it doesn't do that for the elbow. So bodyweight rows, I think, are the, the best foundation for anybody looking to start out, anybody looking to build up strength in calisthenics. But actually, when it comes to specific strength and specific capacity, this is something I've tried. I've not actually seen it anywhere, but I found it has added so much value to my front lever work by pulling to the waist. My thoughts were, if it works for a, a planche with pseudo planche push-ups, then it must surely work for the front lever and so far I haven't been disappointed. Tutorial coming out soon on this one, by the way. Again, the thing to remember with these is that they are a slight variation on the bodyweight roll. Where the bodyweight roll, we essentially are looking for that scapular retraction, right? That's the main purpose of the bodyweight roll. We're essentially pulling with our arms at a arrow head. So elbows are almost 45 degrees away from the body line. With this, we're bringing our elbows far closer to us, making that more of a parallel pulling motion and we're pulling straight down again keeping the shoulders away from the ears and we're pulling to the waist 
rather than pulling to the chest. As you just saw, the next exercise that I went into was the ring face pull. I actually genuinely feel that this exercise is the reason why throughout my whole calisthenics journey, I haven't had any injury, mainly because the injuries around calisthenics tend to come from the shoulder. Yeah, you get a lot of elbow issues, but actually the elbow and wrist issues usually start from higher up because if you're not getting external rotation at the shoulder, what you tend to find is the other smaller muscles have to compensate. So if you've, if you've got internal rotation at the shoulder and then you do a pull up, look at what's happening to the elbow. The elbow is now turning inwards. Your hand is trying to hold the bar outwards. That little difference can be the difference between over a long period of time, can be the difference between an elbow issue, tendonitis, anything more sinister. And the same goes for when you're doing a lot of handstand work. Handstand work, you're elevating the shoulder, you're getting into extreme flexion, well I say extreme flexion, you're getting into flexion. For a lot of people, this is particularly difficult to, to remain in. If you're internally rotated, now look at what's happened to my arm. You see, if I'm in a handstand and I'm internally rotated, now everything is out of whack by externally rotating the shoulder. If you externally rotate your shoulder, you provide way more space for the rotator cuff. You relieve a load of pressure all up the arm. Do your face pulls, guys. This is like this is like the vegetables of exercises. If you do this and eat your greens in the kitchen, chances are you're gonna be strong as well. Let's keep this PG-13. Crowd, typically that is where I would finish a pull day. That is typically where I would stop, do some warm ups, make sure that I'm limbering up the shoulders and actually do a lot of lower body stretching as well. But because it's the first day of the year when I've been able to train outside, summer's taken a long time to get here in the UK, guys. I am going to hit some max hold, banded front lever work, just to overload. I've got a rest day tomorrow, so just going to go absolutely ham on my shoulders until I can absolutely hold it no more. Probably do this for about two sets just to finish my workout. And crowd, that is a wrap. That is my pull session. Hopefully my front lever progress will come along in the same way that my handstand push-up progress came along. If you guys have any tips that you feel worked for you when you were learning front lever, if you know how to front lever already, then let me know down in the comment section below. If you have any questions about the workout or want to see any more of these sort of workout videos, then also throw those in the comment section as well. The lawn mowers are starting to come out, so I'm gonna wrap it up there and crowd. Hope your training keeps going well. Catch you in the next one.